This video will look at setting up the wall attributes and their associated framing tools. Note that dependent on customization, there may be differences to your own environment. To open the wall library, right click in 2D or 3D, go to Insert Wall, or from the Modeling tab, choose Insert Wall. The wall library allows you to select from different wall types, exterior and interior framing, as well as some non-framing architectural wall types. Preset and custom added wall types can also be added, but this will be covered in a further tutorial. For this tutorial, we will choose an exterior CTU framing wall. In the layers column, we can see the various materials and their respective thicknesses used within the structure of the wall, as well as the default heights per layer as defined by the Z levels. Each layer has different options depending on the layer type selected and alters the variables accordingly. These can be manually adjusted. Note the pink frame layer controls all the others. Layers can be altered by clicking in the material column and selecting the appropriate option. To access the parameters for the actual structure of the wall, click on the frame layer within the material field. Right click and framing tools. Default values will automatically be added from the wall library and the wall frame and parameters. However, all can be overwritten to your requirements. The first tab is the general framing tab. Here are various basic parameters from the wall framing, such as corner details and stud spacing. Framing details determine if the wall is load bearing or not and adjust the joints as per the system parameters. Panel label is the prefix used when the user generates the panel breaks. This will automatically pick up the level the user is adding the wall into. End panel tolerance enables the user to shorten panels to create a gap at panel breaks. The under trusses checkbox will add additional studs when generating the framing under any truss envelopes. Moving on to the frame tracks and studs tab. Here, you can define the profiles used in various parts of the frame. Single or double top tracks and their respective profiles can be defined here. For the blockings, there are a combination of options. Flat horizontal bracing that runs on the outside of the panel can be toggled on or off, with the face this is added to determined by the type field. The integral lateral bracing has three main options. A continuous brace along the panel, staggered blockings in each bay, or no blocks at all. For each type, you can define the height from the drop down box, or just simply type in the height or heights of the bracing required. Moving on to the frame openings tab. Here you can set up the rules for the opening types and the side stud profiles and quantities that are used. One of three definable header types will be used dependent on the openings width in relation to these two definable values. The type of header style can be defined by clicking the select button, and much like the corner types, are selected using the diamonds. The advanced button allows you to add in further options for the opening details, such as control of a sill type, cripple rules, and further accessories such as lintel plates. Moving on to the frame bracing tab, this allows you to define diagonal bracing integral to the panel. Each type can be checked on or off, with left and right putting in diagonal bracing to the panel ends, and all putting in bracing into each bay. You can define the type of bracing added in each instance, as well as setting a minimum bracing gap. For each, you can define if it is just a single brace or a K brace. In the Frame Service Hull tab, you can customize service holes further. Default takes the values previously defined in the system parameters. You can then override this by typing in the required heights. You can also determine hull type use from the drop down menu. However, this will depend on the tools available on the roll former. There are also two toggle options to add service holes to both the top track and blocking in the center of each stud bay as well as the ability to add connection and orientation holes. Then there's the frame anchor tab, which allows the user to add in panel anchors from a variety of different manufacturers to both the top and bottom plates. You are able to set a minimum distance from the flange of the stud using the offset distance, as well as define a maximum distance between the anchors. Finally, there's the insulation tab, where you can add integral insulation to the frame, setting the type and if it continues to the inside of the profile. We can then click OK to set our frame attributes. However, if we intended to have sheathing broken down into individual sheets, we need to ensure that each sheathing layer has its own framing tool. Again, right click in the material column, but this time for a sheathing layer and select framing tools. You can then select a different sheathing method depending on the behavior you require. For example, the sheet direction can be altered and you can define if the sheets match the stud layout. This is required for each individual sheathing layer. With the attributes adjusted, we can now click OK and we are now ready to begin adding the walls which will be covered in the next video. Thank you for watching.